Welcome back to my little channel. I've been thinking about this video for quite some time because I know people don't want to be bothered with the whole Corona bullshit. Bullshit? Strong words. Well, maybe, but justified, or at least I think they are. Why do I say that? Currently, we are just about everywhere in the Western world in a lockdown. Fear is what drives it, and the media is what drives the fear. Ah, but the coronavirus is dangerous. People die from it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. People do die from it. And I'm, I'm not going to downplay the fact that people die. But at the same time, people don't like it when people compare this to the flu. And I'm pretty sure that the reason why they don't like the comparison is because, as it stands at this point in time, the flu has more victims than the coronavirus. Well, surely that's not true. No, unfortunately, that is very true. Because if we look at the coronavirus deaths, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to take two countries, I'm going to take the Netherlands and I'm going to take the United States because, well, I mean, I live in one of them. And the other one is pretty easy to find the information for as well. So I'm going to look at these two countries. And I'm going to, how do you say this? I'm going to round up the numbers. And I'm not doing that because it's in my favor. No, no. I'm going to round up and it's going to be in the favor of the corona deaths. Let me first start with showing the amounts of deaths we are having. And, and, and don't get me wrong, once too many. I totally agree with people who say that. I seriously agree. I don't want people to die. But at the same time, we have to admit that people do. And, you know, it might not be what we want, but it bloody well is what it is, whether we like it or not not and i think we have to understand that you know this isn't per se a bad thing don't get me wrong it's not a good thing that people die but it's not something to worry about overly now why do i say that okay sorry i'm rambling look at the numbers at this point in time according to this coronavirus global case by case center for system blah 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 there are 177,000 known confirmed cases. Sounds like a lot, but one could question whether that really is a lot. These are only the confirmed cases. There are probably a lot of people out there who have it, but either they didn't go to the physician because they don't have a real problem with it, or they don't even know that they have any illness. And the ones that do have an illness might easily mistake it for the flu. Because the things that go on with COVID and the things that go on with flu are pretty similar. But that's not the main issue. The main issue is, let look, let's look at the amount of people dying. And at this point in time, the total death in the USA is 3,440. Now, those numbers will go up. Don't get me wrong, they will. So, as an example, let's take 3,400 and let's round it up to 3,500 because it's easy to calculate with, with, with round numbers. I find it easier anyway. Okay, so we've got that round number. And the second one we're going to go for is the Netherlands. Here we have 1,040. Now, I'm going to be a little bit nasty here. I'm going to round it down to 1,000. Obviously, more people will die, I know. 12,000 people that we know carry the sickness, but we don't know how many people we don't know carry the sickness. But a thousand of them have died. Okay. Now, this is bad. This is seriously bad. I'll not pretend this is good news. But the problem is the following thing, and, and, and it's something that I seriously can't understand because 
it's okay that people are sick, or rather it's not okay, but that's how it is. But for some silly reason, we um, ignore, how do you call that thing? The elephant in the room? And the elephant in the room being the flu. Because if we look at the flu, we see, and this is, this is the USA. I'm starting with the USA. With influenza in 2000, um, let, let's, let's go to 2016, 2017, to 17, to 18, to 18, to 19. Okay, 2018 to 2019 was a relatively normal flu season in the USA, with 35,000 people dying of the influenza. Now, 2017 2018 was a little bit of a harsh year with 61,000. By the way, these numbers are estimated because we don't really register those numbers that good anymore because it happens so often and it's so common that eh, you could have died from the flu, you could have had a heart attack because your body was so weakened. Eh, potato, potato. The end result is you're dead and you had the flu. Now, this seems rather... Um, dismissive but trust me this is what's happening because we don't check every death precisely but if we look at 2017 it's 38,000 uh, 2016 23 on average we we stick around 35,000 let's let's say 35,000 because that's the last one but yeah if we look at the other ones if we count them up and then divide them, and you know how to do averages, right? We're, we're about 35,000 on average. Okay, that's a factor of 10 higher than what Corona has done so far. Yeah, but, but Corona hasn't run its course yet. More people will get sick and more people will die. Yeah, you know, I'm 100% agreeing with you. That will be the case. But again, by a factor of 10, that means that... 10 times the amount of people that died of corona can still die and then still it would be roughly the same as flu. Yeah, but corona is far more contagious than the flu. Yeah. See, that's the thing we don't know. People keep saying that, but we don't know. Because if we look at the flu numbers, then if the flu is indeed as contagious as people say it is, then we can easily say that on average... 10% uh, of the country will have the flu. And this is something that shows up in these numbers as well. But we don't know. It's an estimate. And the same is true for Corona. If we see the numbers, those are the numbers that we know have Corona. Well, those are the ones that go to doctors and hospitals because they have a problem. How many other people out there have the coronavirus? but seem to be dealing with it, just like people would deal with the average flu. So it is very possible, indeed very likely, that there is easily 10 times as many coronavirus um, victims, as in they are being sick, as the real number they give us right now. And I'm not saying they do this because they want to lie to us. They do this because they don't know. And there is nothing wrong with not knowing. I mean, we're, we're at the forefront of the news, so to speak. So things will shape up and things will change. Okay, so we've looked at the American numbers. Now let's look at the Dutch numbers. This is, uh, how do you call this? This is from RIVM. RIVM is government. And... Um, Oh, well, yeah, it would be nice if I'd show you, didn't it? Yeah, there we go. Sorry, my, my bad. But this is from RIVM, and it keeps track of death in the Netherlands. Now, I'm going to scroll down a little bit, and, and I'm going to go to the text. Now, I'm sorry, I haven't got it in English. I will translate what I read. You have to believe that what I say is what is actually said. And if you don't, you know what? You can check it out yourself. The website will be linked downstairs. And no doubt Google Translate will be a great friend. So, if we look at 2017-2018, there were a grand total of about 8,885 people that died from the flu. 
estimated is 9,500, but um, counted, more or less counted, which is still not 100% sure, is 8,885. And if we look at 2016, 2017, which is uh, the year before, I mean, a, fleece, a flu season is 217 to 18 because it's the last months of the year and the first months of the next year. Uh, the year before that, um, it was estimated to be at 7,000, but then the estimate got rounded up to, well, nearly 9,000 anyway. And you will see that these two numbers, 8890 and 8885, are roughly the same and if we look at the year before that which was considered to be the highest measured ever there were 8600 so we, we we roughly hang around the 9000 marker i'm going to round it up to 9000 i know not fair that means that corona with about a thousand deaths still has a factor of nine to catch up let that sink in even though people keep telling us that Corona is far more deadly than the flu. And, and maybe in the end this will be true because we're still, well, I think we're roughly halfway this, this Corona wave. But who knows how long it will last. Um, if, if, if it lasts the whole year, then yeah, sure. But okay, we're, we're, I think we're halfway. But let's say we're in the beginning of it. Then even if we are looking at it as we're in the beginning... It, it has to get worse by a factor of nine at least to be competition with the flu. Now, don't get me wrong. Every death is one too many. I, I don't, don't try to downplay it. I mean, I'm really serious. So what is the point I'm trying to make? Well, the point I'm trying to make is we're being forced to be scared for a disease that... Um, as bad as it might be, isn't really that big of a deal. And, and people don't like to think of it like that. I mean, a thousand instead of nine thousand, but we never closed down the country because of nine thousand people dying, yet now we do it because of a thousand people dying. The same is true for America. Three and a half thousand people have died of the coronavirus. Terrible! Every single one is one too many. But in all fairness, we have a faction of, of 10 of those people dying just from the flu. I'm not saying coronavirus isn't bad. I'm trying to put things in perspective. I seriously doubt that it's worse than the normal flu waves we have every year. Now people will say, yeah, but we don't have protection because we can't... Uh, immunize ourselves because we don't have vaccines and we don't have medication and then i'm going to say well the first thing to know is immunization yeah sure that's a nice thing vaccines could be useful maybe next year true that's an issue but then if we look at the swine flu which happened eight nine years ago that one ravaged the world with with overall two thousand people dying two hundred thousand people dying worldwide and that was a flu that most people had very little defenses against. And it was, it was a, a flu that wasn't part of the vaccines because no one saw it coming. Shit happens. That was worse than what the corona is now. But we didn't lock down our countries. We didn't tell people not to go to work. We didn't destroy our economies and our societies because of a sickness. Now, people will make fun about how Trump is handling this wrong and the politicians in each other countries are handling it wrong. For example, I, I, I said this myself not too long ago in Belgium. They're sending out uh, refugees onto the street, even though they tell their regular citizens, stay at home. In, in, in France, they, they are finding homeless people for being homeless because they have to go inside because of Corona. It, there's nothing they can do. Now, Italy is interesting because Italy had a relatively high death count because of the coronavirus. But then again, in Italy, and this is not me saying this, that there have been uh, professors of, 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 of virology speaking about this. 
Italy refused to do anything about the coronavirus because they didn't want to be called racist. And the thing is, the counted, the red numbers that we saw a moment ago on the COVID uh, channel thingy, those are the people who are confirmed to have this coronavirus. We don't know how many people aren't confirmed. But as we, if we look at flu, on average, we estimate the numbers nowadays because we simply cannot calculate it because it's too much. Not everyone being sick goes to the hospital. And I know that Potholer made a video and he attacked Trump for being an idiot. Uh, because he felt Trump didn't handle the situation right. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe not. Maybe Trump was an idiot. Wouldn't be the first time. But then again, <laughs> I mean, seriously, he's playing around with CNN. And at the same time, CNN is at the same time telling Trump, how dare you close the border because of China. And then after they said, how dare you close the border, they turn around and say, why are you not doing anything? It's, it's the double standard from the media is palpable and the whole fear mongering is, is, is so big. Yes, it's terrible that all these people got sick. It is. I'm not I'm not going to downplay it. A lot of people died. This is again terrible. Not downplaying it. But is it really worse than the common flu? And even if it is worse than the common flu, is it really worse than the swine flu we had about nine years ago, I think. Now, why do I take that example once again? Because we didn't close down our economies. We didn't close down our societies. We didn't lock down and put martial law on our citizens. And I cannot stress that enough. Now, of course, I could try to debunk the bullshit potholer said about Trump being an idiot. I'm not going to. Yes, he's an idiot. He's a politician. What the hell do you expect? Is he worse than Cuomo? Bitching and moaning that the American government didn't do enough, even though New York knew for the last four years that they had not enough ventilators for the sick. But now all of a sudden it's a huge problem. Hey, could be me, but I don't think so. Is he any worse than the mayor in Florence who basically told people to go out and hug a China guy. Go out, uh, go out, hug Chinese people. I mean, yeah, you might get sick, but yeah, it's not a big deal. And, and the people dying in China, in Wuhan, died because the air quality in those areas was terrible. Well, guess what? The same is true for the people that died in Italy. They live in, in, in the worst air areas Europe has. The World Health Organization has been warning on that, has, has a warning on that, for the last 10 years. So bad air quality and respiratory illnesses are a bad combination. And there isn't a doctor out there in the world who doesn't know this. But we don't get told this because it's better to keep us afraid. And it's kind of interesting because... There are professionals out there that really hate what is going on. And I'm going to show you, and uh, links will be provided, trust you me. I'm going to show you a little story. Professor Emeritus Dr. Medical Sugarit Bakdi. A very German name, I know, but hey, trust you me, the dude is legit. Or as far as I know, the dude is legit. And he has sent a letter to Frau Bundeskanzlerin Angela Merkel. Now, this letter is in German. It will be linked. But yes, yes, I do have it in English. Or at least I should. There you have it. Sorry. I should have prepared this a little bit better. I know. Okay. An open letter from Professor Sugarit Bakti to German Chancellor Dr. Angela Merkel. I don't know what she's a doctor in, but she's not a medical doctor as far as I know. Okay. In this letter, links will be provided. You can read it yourself. He has a bunch of questions. 
and those questions have to do with the whole letter. I'm not going to do the whole letter, but I am going to do the questions. Did the projections make a distinction between symptom-free infected people and actual sick patients, in the event people who developed symptoms? This is important because of the statistics, because we have lots of people who are infected but not sick. But we pretend that everyone that is counted is also everyone that is sick. But no, the ones that are counted are the ones that have symptoms. But there are lots of people that don't show these symptoms, or definitely not to that severity, and they still spread the disease. These people are normally counted in a flu wave. So that's why in America, an average flu wave has about 45 million people. Is it reasonable to assume that in this whole thing, the COVID thing, we might not know the real number of infected people, but we only know the people that have it bad? Now, the second question. My question, does the current workload of intensive care units with patients that are diagnosed with COVID-19 compare to other coronavirus infections? To what extent will this data be taken into account in further decision making by the federal government? In addition, has the above study, he talks about a study on uh, in the International Journal of Antimicrobial Agents, has this study been taken into account in the planning of how to deal with the crisis? I'm going to say it probably hasn't because the study came out, well, a few days ago. So no, but Yeah, we, we're not looking at the whole workload of intensive care units. And the worst part is, and this is something true in the Netherlands, in the Netherlands, our intensive care units have roughly halved in the last 10 years. So that, all, that might also be a problem. Now, I'm not saying this is the same in America or in other countries, but it's definitely true in the Netherlands. Why? On dissemination, according to a report in the Süddeutsche Zeitung, not even the much-cited Robert Koch Institute knows the exactly how many people are tested for COVID. That was a very bad sentence, but I'm sorry. Now, the Robert Koch Institute is basically a university-level research in viruses. And they have no idea how many people are infected. So why don't we do, and this is his question as well, has there been a random sample of healthy general public to validate the real spread of the virus? Or is this going to be planned in the near future? Now we know that, for example, in Korea, even if you have as much as been in contact with someone, you will get tested. So they know that there are lots of people that might be carrier of the coronavirus, But by knowing who's sick, you can say, okay, you know what? You're sick, stay home, sick it out. See you in a few weeks. This will stop the spread. This is basically what common people do with flu. And if we know how many people are infected, then all of a sudden the mortality rate drops. Oh, sorry, mortality rate. Next part. Has Germany simply followed the trend uh, of a COVID general suspicion? So, because people who are suspicion of having uh, COVID-19 and die are considered to have died from the corona virus. But have they really? Well, we don't know. But it suits the narrative, so let's keep pushing it. And the last question, oh, by the way, here he also talks about um, the air quality in northern Italy being dreadful. I said the last 10 years, uh, according to his letter, and I'm going to put it here. Oh, this is interesting stuff. I think it's interesting. One of these factors is the increased pollution in the north of Italy. According to the World Health Organization estimates, this situation, even without the virus, led to over 8,000 additional deaths per year in 2006 in the 13 largest cities in Italy alone. So even without the coronavirus, people would have died because of respiratory failure. But now it's because of corona. So how was it in the last years? 
And and here they say it's in 2006 that the, they called this problem the first time, but the situation hasn't changed. So if the situation hasn't changed, how do we know that the high mortality rate of Corona is not partly to do because of this? People would have died anyway, but now they died because of Corona. Oh, sorry. The last question. What efforts are being made to make the population aware of these elementary differences and to make people understand that scenarios like those in Italy or Spain are not realistic, in this case in Germany? They're also not realistic in places like the Netherlands. Now, there are places in America where the situation may be realistic. But for most of America, they are not. Now, trust you me, when California gets hit, it might be a shit show. Mostly because of all the shit in California. But will it be because of Corona? Or will Corona be the final straw that broke the camel's back. Now, obviously, this will be linked as well. We don't know a lot of things. And it's I'm not here telling you this is how it is. Oh, no, no I'm 100% sure Corona isn't a problem. Bullshit, Corona is a problem. But the way we are dealing with Corona now is seriously stupid. We are destroying our economy we're destroying our society we are actually giving governments power that they shouldn't have for a sickness that may be no worse than the yearly flu event we have and even if it were worse even if it were on average twice as bad Ten times as bad, then still it's not as bad as the swine flu epidemic we had ten years ago. And that didn't cause a lockdown. Anyway, this is not only against Potholo, who made a, in my opinion, really dumb video. And I like Potholo. I, 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 he is a way bigger YouTuber than I am. He's got more subscribers. But lately I have the feeling the dude has been bitten by the political bug and it, it, it's coloring his um, perception I think perception is a nice word yeah perception but it's also for all the other people out there and I know I'm a small youtuber so please share um, push it seriously push it if you want to make a shorter video than I did bringing these points in a more compact way Please do, because there's a lot of shit going on right now, and we're going to get, we're going to go over the rake because of this, and I sincerely believe, obviously I'm not a scientist like most other people aren't, um, but I seriously believe that we're not being told the truth and this is being used, we're being played. The narrative is being pushed forward, and yeah. It's kicking us in the ass. It's not Corona we have to worry about. It's how our societies deal with this issue. And, you know, staying one and a half meter away from each other, social, social isolation, yeah, sounds all right, sounds all nice, but within reason. And we've lost all reason. Anyway, like, share and subscribe if you feel so inclined. I'm really curious about what you think criticism as always is more than welcome and i hope to see you all next time now the death rate from covid 19 is likely around 0.66 percent if counting the mild or asymptomatic cases according to a new study now past estimates had placed the mortality rate somewhere between two percent and an unbelievable 3.4 percent which would be devastating 